Hi, I'm Paul Carr. And I'm Sarah Lacey. And this is apparently Too Long Didn't Watch, our new show. What is our new show about? Ironically, I am making sure we stick to 10 minutes. I think this will actually be the shortest show on TechCrunch TV. But given the subject matter, it may still be too long yeah, for Yeah, yeah. This, this show is an experiment. It's basically proving that you can talk about things that never traditionally drive traffic on TechCrunch, i.e. international stories yep. and stories from sort of the America's heartland that never gets covered. And uh, people may still watch it. So our that's show is. <laughs> so our show is about everything that's not Silicon Valley. Right. Our show well, is, I mean, tech entrepreneurship. Oh yeah, we're not talking. So about we're not talking farming. about like Paris Hilton. Yeah, we are talking about spies. <laughs> we are talking. Well, we'll get to that. We'll in get a to. We'll get to that in a second. So first of all, um, why I, we're doing this? I show. mean, I know why I'm here because I'm British, and so that every obviously let's have a British person talking about the rest of the world. Maybe America. You've can colonized look. most of it. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> this weekend you can have a little bit of it back. <laughs> Um, but beyond, yes, and you, you though, you're American clearly, so, but you're writing a book. Well, and with my last book, I did a 20 city book tour throughout the U.S. and meeting with a lot of tech entrepreneurs who, you know, frequently as a reporter, I would never meet with people in, you know, Des Moines and Omaha and Memphis and, you know, all no kinds of spots. <laughs> <laughs> and so I met with a bunch of entrepreneurs then, and then um, I've been for almost two years now working on my second book, which is about entrepreneurs in emerging markets. So I've spent much of the last three years outside of Silicon Valley more than inside Silicon Valley. So hopefully in this show we can take a little bit of the rest of the world that traditionally the Valley couldn't give less of a damn about. Make it interesting. And make it interesting. <laughs> Well, so or fail horribly. As luck would have it, this week um, a story. We were has, handed something. We were handed a, a golden <laughs> nugget of amazing, just everything. It has everything. It has it has spies. It has Russia. It sex. has sex. Or it sexy has women. Sexy women, which is the same thing yeah. um, to most people to, on the internet. To you. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it also has, and it has New York. So just to, to give some background on this story, um, most people will know. A few days ago, I think it was ten um, people living in America were arrested. <laughs> Turns out they were Russian spies. Who alleged. Knew? Alleged Russian spies. Turns out they were alleged to be Russian spies. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia, of course, says, no, they weren't, mm -hmm. which is what you're supposed to do. You're not <laughs> supposed to go, yes, they are. Oh. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting, there's an interesting twist has, has come up today. So Eric Schoenfeld broke this on TechCrunch. Um, one, of the, one of the spies, Anna Chapman, runs an internet company, or ran, I guess. They probably closed it now. But it's still mm -hmm. up. The site is still up. Um, ran an internet startup. Uh, more than that, she, like all good entrepreneurs, massively promoted herself. She, <laughs> this is astonishing. She turned up at. Um, she, well, she like just networked ridiculously. <laughs> I know who would yeah. who would have yeah. thought. But more important, we was her cover. Uh, her cover was to to be out in the open. That yeah. you know, where better to hide than in plain sight? But she, um, she went to New York Entrepreneur Week. And she networked aggressively, which makes sense if you're a spy. Mm -hmm. And actually, I or an entrepreneur, or an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, but she also agreed to do a video um, promoting because, her company. Yeah, yeah, because she was so impressive that they said yeah. we would like your. We camera. need you to be the face of this event. So there's this incredible video of an alleged spy, alleged hot spy, who looks. If she's not a spy, she should be because she's hot. <laughs> Like, if you were a Russian, you'd be like, get me that girl. I know, I don't care. But she's an entrepreneur, she's not a spy. We'll make her a spy. We can teach that. So they, they we have this, let's, let's take a quick look at the video. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a very new startup. You know, we, we started working on this last month, mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure out business model and trying to find my co-founders in New York before then. Um, so um, it's something that we going to work on for the next half a year probably and uh, probably try to raise money for it and um, this is also um, part of my holding company which is based in Europe um, and that's the company I have been involved for the last three years. It's a big jump from investment banker to entrepreneur, how you doing? I think that is the best choice I've ever had to do in my life and I never would go back and that's something I never regret to do. So we're joined now by John Palacio. Um, John, you have you have an amazing story. So tell us how you met. Sorry, I'm just I'm welcome to your 15 minutes. I'm amazed. Yeah, <laughs> this is well. Uh, tell us tell us how you met the spy. Uh, well, she wasn't a spy, obviously, or at least well, she was. Myself and such, but I was working for. I run a production company here in New York, and uh, a, a venture called New York Entrepreneur Week hired my uh, production company to, to do the video services for uh, their event. And apparently Anna Chapman, uh, the accused spy, went to New York Entrepreneur Week uh, last November and was very successful in networking, so much so she caught the eye <laughs> of 
entrepreneurial folks, and they had asked me to assemble a group of people that had uh, uh, benefited from the first Entrepreneur Week because there was another one this past April. So they were promoting it. And so basically I sat down with her, did about a 12-minute interview with her about how quickly and how well she networked with the power players of New York. Now, wouldn't someone who was acting as a spy want to be under the radar? Well, you know, this is the Internet age, so spies, I guess, have to be... Uh, <laughs> They have to use social media too. Resourceful. <laughs> uh, look, she her her story was, and uh, it seems by all accounts that she was moving forward in this story, that she was a uh, web entrepreneur. She had a real estate business that was uh, that she she had a uh, a couple of pages of uh, of a business plan, and she was reaching out to angel investors and venture capitalists and the like to, to execute it. That's so, more than most entrepreneurs have. It's more, I was going to say, that should have been their plan. first sign. Like, this, she's somehow <laughs> too prepared. Um, so was there anything, uh, anything about her that made you think, wait a second, this isn't like a normal entrepreneur. Was there anything that made you think, obviously not that she's a spy, but that it was... Long cigarette holder, yeah. sticky black dress. Any... <laughs> Sticking notes on the park benches. Now, is there anything that made you think, yeah, something, something's Besides up Besides the, if you tell about this, I'll kill you. <laughs> if you broadcast this video to anyone. Yeah. Uh, look, no, she. Look, it's hard when you're an entrepreneur and you have something to sell. You come in with your, you know, elevator pitch, and so she, like everybody else, was nervous but uh, on point. Uh, but I'll tell you, she was so nervous about the event. I mean, if you watch the video, you can see she's sort of giggling and laughing. She had a friend of hers, and she was sort of singing at one point. She was so nervous about it that when we finished, she begged the uh, New York Entrepreneurial founders to actually watch the video watched every frame and then begged me to reshoot the whole thing, uh, which I said was not, you know, not possible because we're so busy. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, you know, we convinced her not, but she was clearly uh, worried about how she presented herself and we just assumed it was because she was trying to sell a business. She's a spy with media training. This is the future of spy. Well, without media training. <laughs> without, I, mean, oh, I don't clearly, think they yeah. train you to sing and giggle compulsively in videos. I don't know. <laughs> she, this is a girl that, uh, that knew that how to, knew she had a presence, knew that she was very uh, attractive. And, uh, you know, I, I was obviously at the New York Entrepreneur as well and saw her in action and she was, you know, she was very attractive and camera ready. One of the reasons why we chose her for this promotional video, and uh, she was able to use that effectively. And why so. the Russians allegedly chose her to be a spy. <laughs> now, is is uh, entre are entrepreneurs the new journalists in terms of it's the ideal cover for being a spy? Because it used to be journalists because they can ask questions, they can be pushy, and everyone just thinks typical journalists. It, are entrepreneurs the new you know because they can they can ask you they can push you for contacts they can be weird they can be weird they yeah. can travel around the world they can you know they can meet important people um are we about to see more entrepreneurs do you think unmasked as spies should we be keeping an eye on sergey brin <laughs> Uh, you, you, you never know. Uh, you know. I think entrepreneurs are the new black, to be honest. With you. <laughs> it uh, is. You know, look, everyone I, is an entrepreneur, no matter. So I think it's spies. I think it's probably drug runners call yep. themselves entrepreneurs. That book, uh, White Tiger, where yep. a murderous cab, cab, cab here, driver in India is calling himself an entrepreneur. Exactly. Everyone is. Here's the thing I've been trying to, to gather because, you know, you, you read some of these uh, articles and I'm trying to figure out okay, yeah, she was. Uh, you know, collecting networking of, of some power players in the money world of, of New York. But what information is that that she's going to get to help the Russian government? <laughs> maybe the, Silicon Valley maybe audience the, is going to love that quote. Maybe the Russian <laughs> government is trying to improve how it's using Twitter. We've seen the Russian president here at Twitter. Maybe it's just social media tips. I mean, That's possible. Yes, they, they, they need the next Twitter in the Soviet Union. It's I pretty low level. Maybe the Russians are just so used to getting spies to get their information that rather than saying going on to TechCrunch <laughs> and reading, they're like, we must send people to infiltrate the West. It's like, you it can just look so on the internet, time. dude. Um, John, John Platz here. Thank you very much. It's an amazing story. I guess you're probably <laughs> talking, to, talking to a lot of media today. Thank you for talking to TechCrunch TV. And um, good luck with the wiretaps that are going to be on your and, phone. And by all means, if you I'll find any more spies, you can call us and break it on TechCrunch. You don't have to deal with the government or the CIA or anything like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Bye-bye. It's just an amazing story. I just can't. I could. I could watch that video all day. I just You're watch so it right. jealous. You didn't uncover the spy. I want. That's you know like what it your is? fantasy it's not to have hot entrepreneur spies coming in to do shows on TechCrunch TV. It's not. But I would like to. Yes. But except, I would like to. Halfway through, I'd be like to have figured it out and to be be able to say like Columbo. Say one more thing, Anna. <laughs> Am I not right in saying that you're a Russian spy? And have a go. Damn you. Wouldn't you hook up with her first though? Uh, I mean, that's the benefit of. Of finding oh, a spy. I would. I would offer. They have to sleep with you. I would offer to introduce her to Robert Scoble. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to think of the highest level contact I have. I'd say I can get you in with Scoble, um, but on there is a condition. I've seen James Bond films. I know what goes on. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we will have to do some of that weird sex where you strangle me with your legs. That's what <laughs> I'd say. And she'd say, da, or yeah, whatever they say. Yeah, let's not do say. that on camera. Um, okay. You know, I think this is interesting, though, and I think it's a little bit sad, actually, for Russian entrepreneurs because, you know, there's always been this... They're not all spies? This, no, but there's always been this concern that, you know, of investing in Russia because mm. of a lot of organized crime, because of a lot of blurry lines between sort of what the government's doing, what the government's not doing. Um, and I it's mean, totally and it's, unreasonable. How, we're well, slandering okay, Russia. To be, it, to be fair, I mean, part of it probably is unreasonable. There are probably a lot of people, and I feel like, you know, Silicon Valley's brief love affair with chat roulette and the president just being here and visiting Twitter, I feel like the two were, you know, maybe just investors. Saying, not... A big delegation of VCs just went over there. I feel like they were kind of starting to maybe come together and people look at investing more in Russia and, uh, you know, rather than just DST buying all of our companies. And then they go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, we're going to send 10 <laughs> spies. <laughs> <laughs> One of whom's going to start it. No, but you know what I mean? I mean, I would hate to see this get blown out of proportion. As I would say, you mentioned Andrew from Chat Roulette there. I'm just thinking, so Chat Roulette is a way for millions of Americans to voluntarily <laughs> turn on cameras <laughs> in their living rooms. Please don't allege he's a spy. We don't need a lawsuit. I'm not saying that. No, I'm not suggesting for a second that Andrew is a spy. I'm simply saying that one of the good things about Chat Roulette is it... And yet you, have, uh, you interviewed him. You didn't uncover it. He didn't come across. He wasn't hot. Mm. You know, had he been hot, sense. I'd have been paying attention to what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was just nodding. I don't really understand Russian. Oh God. Um, but here's, <laughs> but that is, what you just said is interesting because you're saying, you know, we malign Russia and you know, people, aren't, people don't take it seriously or whatever else. Well, I think there's a, there's a sense of trepidation is when Russia it comes in your book? to... It's not. It's not because, uh, you know, when I was doing a lot of the you know, legwork and interviewing a lot of people before about picking what countries to go to because it's very expensive to spend six weeks or so reporting in a country and mm -hmm. you know I had to kind of make some decisions before going to places uh, I looked at Russia and I mean the thing that I heard from people who've invested there people who've tried to invest there is these concerns and so um, I didn't go there but I was wanting to once the book went wrapped up do a reporting trip there and you know check it out but uh, you know so I don't know well, now you can't because our well, our phones are going to be tapped. <laughs> I know. Right, now after that this I've interview, every Russian that's it. Now we're going to get yeah. we're going to get subpoenaed by the the CIA. I'm excited about that. Are I'm you? I'm kind of jealous of the fact that like the um, John who we just spoke to, and you know they're going to get like their phones tapped stuff. I kind of want to be. I will say, and this is a little bit of a counterintuitive reach, but if there is new concern about investing in Russia, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it would be actually be a good thing for Brazil, who just goes booted out of the World Cup today, so they need some good news. Because a lot of VCs I know are very stealthily spending a lot of time looking at Russia and Brazil, who've already been right investing enough. in India and China and thinking, what's the next market we want to open an office into? What's the next market we want to start wading into and experimenting? And, um, you know, it's so they were going to like, the Brazil until there's a Brazilian scandal. Go, I mean, other than death threats the Brazilian, to me. The Brazilian Groupon <laughs> has a few fake deals. Russia said, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, Two like, scandals in one here, week. Like, the, the Brazilians are sitting there going, how do we undo all the damage this, this fake, <laughs> fake deals on Groupon has done? Now Russia just hands it to them. This is a good day for Brazil, football notwithstanding. It's a good day for our show, too. It's a great day for our show. That was not that was not a bad way I to start. I hope someone does something outrageous next week. Next week we've got I Mike Butcher talking we're... about mm. uh, Moo.com again. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Maybe next week won't be as good. We can always but, trash Spotify. But tune in next week. <laughs> always trash. There's always Spotify, who, who will always be a company. It's going to be our fallback. I know. If in doubt, <laughs> Daniel Eek. He's Swedish. Um, tune in next week and find out if we have as good a story as this. I Spoiler alert, we won't, but... <laughs> We'll see you then. <laughs> That's it.